There we go. And we'll begin. Good morning and welcome to Morning Devotions with the community of St. Andrews in Glenwood, Maryland. My name is Dina and I will serve as leader today. If you're new to this service, know that you are welcome to participate fully and that we are recording the service so that others can access it at a time that's convenient for them. To begin today, I'll need two volunteers. Who would like to volunteer today? Robert will be volunteer number one, and Mike will be volunteer number two. Wonderful. I'm going to share our screen so you can see what you are now reading, volunteers. Make that a little bigger. How's that? Yeah, that's fine. Good. Good. Wonderful. Take Lord and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will, all I have and call my own. You have given all to me, to you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours, do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace, that is enough for me. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness, and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior, and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of your mortal nature, let us now pray before the Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. O God of love, you are the true son of the world evermore risen and never going down. We pray you to shine in our hearts and drive away the darkness of sin and the mists of error. We pray that we may this day and all our lives long walk without stumbling in the way you have prepared for us, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. All right, for our meditation today, we are reflecting on the text in a different way. I printed the text in here so that I could read through it this morning a little earlier today. This is the text from Genesis 16, 1 through 16, and 21, 8 through 20, focused on the story of Hagar. We're going to look at a couple of images and focus in on one of those images specifically, but I wanted to make sure folks had a context. If you did not um, join on Monday or, um, or yesterday to hear this story again. So we've got Hagar having born a son, Ishmael, um, at the urging of Sarai. And then we have that child growing up and um, becoming a bit of a threat to Sarai. And therefore, um, Abram casts them out into the wilderness, right? And we know the, um, a little bit about the end of the story that God was with the boy and he grew up, he lived in the wilderness 
she saw a well of water, filled the skin with water, you know, that they make it. Um, but it's a pretty hard story. So I'm going to close this piece out for the moment. And hope I can find it again someday when we come back on and pull up some images for us to look at. So the first image I want to show you, we're not going to really talk about, uh, but I want to show you this, this way that an artist, hang on, I've got to navigate, I can't navigate and talk evidently, how an artist uh, depicts what it looked like when Sarah brought Hagar to Abraham or Abram. So let's take a look at what one artist imagines that moment to look like. Okay. <laughs> what do you notice in this painting? She's pointing. She's saying you're going to have dressed her. <laughs> well, Yeah. She's dressed in white. Yeah. White's important. The colors mm. are important. Yeah. Trying to make this a little bigger for us. Yep. She's dressed in white. And how they does don't. Sarah's how does Sarah's face look? Determined. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think she's saying? I mean, you you judge. Yeah. No, who judge between us? Who is right? I think I think she's saying she's pretty good, right? You can sleep <laughs> with her, right? This is fine. Yeah. She'll do. She'll do, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what an interesting um, image, right? See this person in the back? Yeah. Yeah. Who's that? Who knows? <laughs> probably the think? patron. Yeah, probably the patron who paid for the painting. Um, it's somebody thinking it could have been me. I could have been Hagar. I could have been um, the one that the Lord of the manor slept with, right? And I'm, you know, maybe I wonder if there's a little jealousy here because Hagar gets this prime position, right? Mm. <laughs> it's an interesting, I think you're, you're right, Martha, about the white. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at this, Hagar is represented quite beautifully, isn't she? I mean, you could tell it's satin fabric or silk or something. Which if she's a servant, she wouldn't have worn that. So, you know, it's, it's, yeah. almost, it's almost like Sarah dressed her up to present her to Abram in this, right? And his face is kind of like, well, what is he thinking? Well, I mean, if I must, what is he thinking, right? Thinking, I'm gonna get in trouble for this somewhere. This is good, yeah, this is too good to be true. No good answer. <laughs> right, so just imagine that moment. And I like the image with that person in the background looking a little, um, interested or maybe even jealous because I think it, it might have been um, a, a kind of a good situation at some level for Hagar, right? And, you know, that she has really secured her place in this household. She's becoming kind of a lesser wife, if you will, to Abram. Who knows? And then fast forward to when Sarah gets threatened and jealous, okay? So I think it, that face in the corner is is... I, I just kind of liked it. Um, and then here we have what happens when Sarah gets jealous and Abram casts them out into the wilderness. Uh, let me see if I can get in here a little bit bigger. Yeah, that's go. good. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, that's much better. So what do you, I mean, it's hard to see. It's a dark, it's a fairly dark painting, but what do you notice and want to say about this? The surprise on the uh, face looking up. There's surprise on her face yeah. from the angel above. Yeah, is this, is are wide. It, yeah. Is it the same artist? No. No. She, she looks, looks very similar to, her face looks similar to the previous one. And, but also again, the colors, it's so dark, dark and yeah. there's light yeah. on the three subjects, but the background is dark. So it's mm -hmm. turmoil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's, she's got her hands in a gesture of imploring. Yes. Save like, the What child. am I going to do? What am I, what, what do you, right? This like, ah, I mean, there's an emoji like this, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, with those hands out. 
And look, look underneath the angel. Do you see there's like a castle? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's building. some sort of building yeah. or castle mm -hmm. there. Um, and I wonder if that's not, you know, I mean, in, in whatever this is, uh, let's see, this was painted in 1657. So that's the 1657 version of what they thought Abram's house looked like. <laughs> funny. Uh, it almost looks like it would have been a castle. It almost looks like you can see those mm -hmm. turrets or something. Yes. Uh, so what I love about looking at a painting like this from 1657 is this artist tried to imagine what life was like for Abram and depicted it in his own context, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Abram's a big man. He's like important. He must have a castle or mm -hmm. he must have this kind of space. And then he cast them into the wilderness as it looked like in Italy, the Italian countryside, right? The wilderness, which is dark. Um, it, it is really like black, dark in a lot of spaces. So this all looks dangerous, doesn't it? All these look, they're almost like tendrils of danger in the painting. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. And then in the midst of that, those tendrils of dark danger, you've got this child sleeping. And what I like yeah. about this one is we know that Sarah got jealous when Ishmael was how old? Does anybody remember the clues in the Bible around that? He's around 14. No, not Ishmael. Right. No, I'm right. sorry. Right. Ishmael. She's, yeah, Ishmael starts to get, um, she starts to get jealous when the child is weaned, mm -hmm. right? And it probably just grows from there. So here he looks how old? Seven or eight. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, he's still very childlike, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just remember that because we're going to look at another example. And look at her clothes. She's not all dressed in white in this painting, is she? Yeah. No. The, the angel looks like she's having a really good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quite a contortion up there. Love yeah, it, I mean, she's <laughs> looks like smiling and uh, yeah, boy, have I got good news for you. Yeah, oops, I, I'm trying to figure out how to make it. There we go. Excuse these little things I'm doing to it. Yeah, I, I love the light uh, breaking behind the angel. That's a, mm -hmm. that's oh. a, a very nice uh, <laughs> testament of uh, uh, God's light breaking in. Kind of up in here. Yeah. And do you see do you see what the oh. angel is riding in on? A cloud. Oh, wow. That cloud. Yeah. Look at that mm -hmm. fluffy cloud magic carpet. Mm -hmm. And and I wonder if in the time this is painted, if that's the outfit of a peasant. Mm -hmm. You know, versus a noble woman, right? That might be more peasant <laughs> garb. Mm -hmm. Um it looks more noble. More mm -hmm. it looks more noble. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I, I don't know enough about the clothing. Let's take a look at another one. And that's quite different. This one. Oh, and now I've lost you all. Hang on. No, you're there somewhere. We're okay, here. there we go. We see you. We're here. We haven't you lost me? you. <laughs> see you. All right. Oh, yeah. So this is so light and bright, isn't it? I mean, just yeah. stylistically, it's mm. so almost cartoonish compared to that thick paint and the dark kind of um, rubbed in darkness. Um, but here we see Kyle, <coughs> probably also about seven or eight, would you say? Yeah, a little Maybe bit 10. more. Maybe it's 10. Uh, yeah, he looks yeah. healthy. He looks very healthy. Yeah, you know, ruddy. Yeah, ruddy, ruddy complexion. And she looks- So the legs healthy. almost look uh, infant-like still. They've still got yeah. some roundness to them. Yeah, yeah. Right. So Therapy this, kind of stuff. I'm yeah. intrigued by the blue uh, uh, wrap that, that she has on. That's Mary's color. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm surprised that the artist would paint, put that on her. Yeah, that is definitely Mary's color. So maybe Botani only knows how to paint women with blue because he's only painted a lot of Marys. Or he's making he's making a connection between Mary and Jesus and Hagar and Ishmael, right? Yeah, that was what I was thinking. And so I wonder if he's seeing some parallel in the story. Because now, <laughs> now the painting is the Annunciation. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You take that kid out of it. <laughs> the angel it is like 
Yeah. Oddly proportioned. The angel's also, head is, well, his head seems a little small for his body. Or, I think that's the wings throwing you off, Susan. It's uh, hard to get it. Hard to get to cover the wings. That so chest and that head don't ring. match. <laughs> He is smaller. He's smaller than she is, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. But maybe because he's receding into the background. Mm -hmm. Or he's a spirit being and the artist wants to depict it differently. Or it's kind of like the legs of the child. Maybe proportion is just something difficult and challenging. For sure, right? Mm -hmm. But the body of the angel is, is so different than the body of the child. Like it, it's, mm -hmm. they're very different. You wonder if maybe some of the interns did some painting. <laughs> Studio interns. So here she's got luscious fabric on and a cape. And what's this over here? Yeah. The empty, empty water jug. Empty water jug, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's quite yeah, a rich jug. color jug. Pretty nice. It looks like it's metal, brass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Copper, it's even me, mm -hmm. opposed to ceramic. Yeah, it's a lot to be lugging around in the desert. That's right, along with the kid. Yeah. Well, it yeah. could be copper because it keeps water cold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a nice symbolic piece, you know, to have that, um, that empty space just sort of staring at us in the painting. It reminds me of the stone that's rolled away. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, it's it's tomb like. It's not a tomb. Um, it's you know something else. But it, the water is gone. They're going to die, and then the angel comes. So I think there are in this painting some references uh, to the Annunciation in Hagar's story, as well as um, survival through something like an angel and the resurrection, which of course is a scene with angels, right? Neither of the paintings showed the well that, that uh -huh. she found. There are some, there are some, and there's a really nice drawing by Rembrandt that shows like a village well, not at all what it would have looked like, but really lovely artwork of what Rembrandt's community looked like. Um, some very nice drawings of a well that has this like cupola top on it. Um, very beautiful. I wanna show you just one more and then we'll move on. So this one is a little puzzling to me, and that's why I want to share it. This is, a re this is Rembrandt. This is not the one that has the well. That's dark. very dark. Yes, yeah. it's very, wow. very dark. Super dark. And, you know, the, the first one of the three that we looked at, we saw the picture of, um, you know, the setup between Hagar and Abram, yeah. and then we've seen three images. And we look at this one, um, it's just so hard to see because it is very dark, but this is very different, isn't it? Hmm. What do you see in just this close up here? What do you notice? Hagar's well, hair is short. Go ahead, Jan. Hagar's hair is short. Mm, it does look short. It looks short. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, instead <laughs> of flowing around her, it's kind of in a pulled back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She looks more peasant-like with her clothing. Mm -hmm. Yes. The yeah. angel looks more Jesus-like. Yes. Yes. You can barely see the wings here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're dark. They're not like light-colored feathers. They're like a dark. And so then you kind of imagine that they're over here as well. Maybe I see a little bit here. Jeez, it's hard. And behind his head, it's almost like stars behind him. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a star. Mm -hmm. The He's angel is not looking down at Hagar. He's looking yeah. at something ahead of him. That's important. What do you what what might the angel be looking at? The well, well perhaps. Maybe the well. The child. Where's the child, right? Where's yeah. the child? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the jug has changed that, to a wicker drink. the yes. arm. See the child, uh, the arm you there? See. It looks their foot. Right here? Yeah, I think that's yes. the, yeah. I think Isn't those that's, are her feet. That's her feet. From kneeling. Is it? That's her feet. That's her yeah. feet. Yep, there's a little sandal on it. Right there's the front of the sandal, the front of the slip but, on. Are there jewels or something hanging from the belt of her? They right almost here. look something yeah. sparkly. Yep. yep. 
And then there's like little decorative things on, on here and the woven, that woven scarf. Hmm. And um, somebody said the wicker jug, it looks like a bottle of Chianti, you know, with like some crocheted basket work around a bottle, maybe lighter than the last object we saw. Hmm. And here's a- I skipped over to expect it to be empty. Right, it's sitting there like it could be full. And here we have some bundles like you might take with you to travel. This looks more like travel gear than our last painting. And then this looks like some uh, creepy growth on a tree, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or the roots maybe. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, ominous. Gross, um, and this is kind of an ominous dirt clod or rock. Mm -hmm. um, and then I can't really tell what's down here under her feet, but I cannot find Ishmael in this painting, mm -hmm. right? He's if sleeping. I, yeah, yeah. Maybe because it's so, night. Um, which reminded me of a scene in, um, oh, an Alice and Amy Tan book um, mm. where a mother in China has to flee and yeah. leave her twins by a tree to die because she can't watch them die. And somebody comes along and there's a rescue, but you know, these, these women that are fleeing and they're all going to die. They have no food, they have no water. And so they can't bear to see their children die. Mm. It's a really important moment in that book. And I wonder if that's what we're looking at here, that she can't bear to see him suffer. So she's looking away from the child. He's not even in the scene, right? Yeah. She, she looks much more, uh, sad and, and, uh, broken hearted here than she did in, in the other pictures. Yeah. This is a, it's over. It's over look, right? It's mm. over. Yeah. yeah. That's a little too current for me, huh? It is current. It is yeah. current. It so, does seem to be in an attitude of prayer. Yeah. Yeah. And you, it, that's, that's interesting because you wonder in the story, uh, if you, and not that it's a competition, but who are the most faithful of the characters? And Hagar seems more faithful at times to me than Abram and Sarai, right? Um, that, you know, she turns to God, right? He has the least power. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's interesting to see where the light is. She's, the light is on her arms where she's, um, it's a supplication. Um, I think that was one of the interesting things that came out of the uh, Rachel Held Evans uh, midrash is that uh, she recognizes the angel is from Sarah's God and that her own idols, her own, uh, uh, you know, images have been powerless to help her. And uh, yet it's uh, Sarah's God that intercedes, intervenes for her and Ishmael. Hmm. Wow. So, I mean, in there you know, she's been the mother that had the baby for the other woman. And then she ends up calling on the God of the other woman. Right. Yeah. Pretty complex. All right. I'm going to bring us back to the other document if I can find it. Good luck. Hang on. Woohoo. Found it. And what I'm, what's that? Another cat. Another cat. Yep. Yeah. All right, let me screen share that again. As we go back into word rather than image, um, how was that for folks? Was that helpful? Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and you know, one of the things I think about is it's really only been the last hundred years or so that women had any say about who they married and thereby whose children they had. And, um, you know, it's something we take for granted right now that women have choices about who they marry and who they have children with. Um, but for a lot of human history, that was, not, that was not how it was understood, right? So, you know, I mean, Hagar in a way brings us a story of women who were caught up in the business of powerful men and family legacies and, and don't have as much agency. Right. And so it keeps us mindful of women that are still in those situations where they don't have that agency over whose children they have um, and if they'll have children. So 
it's an, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's in all, even if we're not descended from Hagar and Ishmael, there are women in our stories and in our ancestry um, that did not get to make those choices as well. So um, we've all descended from women who had choices made for them at some level. So um, turning now to our prayers, I'm grateful to look at those paintings, the dark and the light, the colors, the fabrics, um, what the baby looks like or child looks like, um, if she looked prepared for the journey or just kind of lost out there, what she's left behind. Um, does keep us mindful of those who are leaving safe space and finding themselves lost in the wilderness today, physically and metaphorically. So let us pray. Loving God in our faith, we pray for reconciliation between the violated and the violent. That we may rest in your peace. For generosity between rich and poor people everywhere that we may share the abundance of your creation. For the growth of love between broken peoples and nations. That we may shape our common life as your kingdom. For mutual respect between immigrants and insiders. That we may welcome your image in all who come to us. For protection for the weak and humility for the strong that we may serve others as you serve us in Christ. I invite your prayers of intercession. A friend, Kathy, and Pete. For Alma, Maggie, Jeremy, Sam, all the Ukrainians, all the Russians. I'm thankful for the Lenten gathering that we had last night. I'm grateful to see you all, and I'm grateful for time to write and um, know the presence of God in a different way. I pray for Najiba and Faramars, for all Afghan refugees, for the family that we will soon welcome in our own community. For all the joys and concerns of our hearts. That we may live with gladness and trust. Lord God Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with the mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Create in me a clean heart. O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Have mercy on us, O oh God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out our offenses. Renew a right spirit within me. Wash us through and through from our wickedness and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within me. For I know my transgressions and my sins are ever before me. Renew a right spirit within me. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Renew a right spirit within me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Renew a right spirit within me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will, all I have and call my own. You have given all to me. To you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me.